I think about half of them are here. There's the Croatian lineup. Tony Kukoc, Stojan Brankovic, Dino Radja, Danko Svetichanin, who starts today, and Vladan Alanovic. Uh, pretty handy lineup, Lindsay. Yes, I think it's a very impressive lineup. Uh, I'm not too sure th how far they go deep on the bench, but uh, their, their first five and the Australian five, is, there's no change there with Shane Hill matching up with, uh, with Andrew Gaze in the backcourt. On the front line... USA, Tolliver and Rodriguez. So all is in readiness here for this game, and Australia has two wins under their belt, as does Croatia, but how they'd love to win this game, the Boomers and go to the top of the pool now if they win this uh, game here of course they go to the top of the pool and they avoid crossing over against the usa not that that's a real problem later on anyway but we'll explain that as we get further into the game but here's the jump ball frankovic against bradkey and frankovic controls the tip we'll have a look at some of the matchups lindsay look at the front line well uh, blauhoff's given the job on tony kukoc that's an assignment He's guarding and he's going to be defending a player who just signed a contract for 26 US million dollars. Yeah, that's dollars. 35 million Australian. So, uh, if you think about money value, I'm not too sure what Andrew Vlahov's uh, salary cap limit is in Australia. There might be a margin there, but it will certainly be a good test for him tonight. Val called on Tony Ronaldson uh, in the opening couple of minutes. There'll be some nerves out there for the Australians, and you certainly can't blame him for that. I mean talk about an away game in front of all these thousands and thousands of Croatians here one of the problems we got here is seeing the game every time the flags raise but here's that man Kukots uh, that we're talking about the 35 million dollars Australian he got for six years at the Chicago Bulls and straight underneath to find Dino Raja and that is going to be the difficulty the Aussies face all night well uh, Tony Ronaldson just lost vision for a moment and that was enough for uh, Kukots who's not just there for his scoring, but he's probably one of the best playmakers in this competition here. A man is open, he's going to get the ball to him. Count the basket there to Mark Bradke on a goal 10 from Brankovic, and the first two points for the Aussies, they tie it up at two points apiece. Here's the drive from Mark Bradke, it's up to the door, oh, gee, right on the top of its not arc. Not much was margin it? there, but not that'll be lot. good for his confidence. I thought it looked good first time, but when I see it on replay, mm, it was a maybe. But Kukoc with Vlahov out on him into the veteran uh, Alanovic. Kukots is taking Vlahov all over the floor and fires up for three. He can hit that all right. They've seen him hit so many in the finals for the Chicago Bulls. There's a sign in the crowd that said, Tony, you're underpaid. But immediate yeah. reply at the other end, that was a sweet shot coming well, from Brankovic. Sends, that certainly sends a message to Brankovic there that Mark Brankovic has improved his range and that jump shot from the free throw line will be acceptable for him. Both team bringing up ball up the floor fairly slowly. Kukots has been fouled, a reach in foul. I think it's against Andrew Gaze. I'll wait for the signal. Yes, that was on Andrew Gaze there. He was trying to give some help on, uh, on Vlahov as uh, Tony Kukots decided to take it to the basket. So here they are lining up for the out-of-bounds play and Alanovic to Josip Rankovic. Raja and can't make the two. The rebound falls for Mark Bradke. Well, they go to Bradke again. They're prepared to take his man on underneath. And the got a goal 10 call. The points will go to Andrew Gaze. And a shake of the head there from Stoyan Blankovic. Have a look at it again. Terrific feed off between the Melbourne Tigers teammates. Up it goes, and that was right on the top of its arc as well. So Australia have not put a ball through the hoop. And in fact, they have from Mark Bradke's jumper, but two that have gone uh, up above the rim have counted for, for four points. And that's the way the game is being played, well above the rim here tonight with this huge team from Croatia. And a turnover run down by Andrew Blahoff. Andrew Gaze was fouled on the way to the hoop. And he'll go, he's asking for a goal tend again. <laughs> the foul call against Josip Frankovic, who's, uh, I'm told, Lindsay has no relation to Stoyan. No, that's right. Uh, there's no relationship there. Maybe that's uh, the same as Smith in, uh, in Croatia, but uh, a very talented guard. 
I think uh, he blocked the ball on the way up there. The second shot might have been a bit above the basket. You saw Andrew Gaze's yeah. free throw stats there. He's hit 20 of 21 now, 21 of 22 for the tournament. He hit 15 out of 15 against Cuba, where he had a 30-point game. He opened up with 32 points against Korea, and they'd love to get 30 from him tonight, but they're going to be pretty hard to get. Well, that's a very good start from Australia, I think, certainly by contrast to the game that they played in, uh, against Croatia in the Barcelona Olympics, where Croatia led from start to finish, and one of the issues here is the question of controlling the tempo of the match. And, Two uh, with a miss. Yugoslavia, I think, are playing just a little bit more up-tempo than I expected. Nothing from Andrew Gaze from outside the three-point circle, and a long court pass into the hands of Dino Raja. That's pretty hard to stop. Well, that, uh, that's what I say. I, I was expecting uh, Croatia to uh, walk the ball up the floor, especially in the first few minutes, to try to establish an isolation and work their big men. But clearly they've shown they're prepared to run as well. Couldn't want to put your body on the line with the seven-foot centre coming at you from half-court. Shane Heal goes in low to Tony Ronaldson, intimidated a little bit, but Ronaldson follows up and makes the two, and Australia stays in front by ten points to seven. A very good start from the Boomers. First two games they had were crunch games. This is a game they'd love to win and go to the top of their pool. Doesn't mean a great deal next week, but Kukots is fouled a long way from the hoop. One of the, uh, the toughest assignments here is for uh, Andrew Vlahoff. When you've got the 6'9 player in uh, Tony Kukots handling the ball so much, he advances the ball down the floor. You would not... You would normally expect the smaller guards uh, on the Croatian team to handle the ball, but in this case, Kukoc plays virtually like a guard. Now, from Vlahos' point of view, he wants to pressure him down the floor to try to prevent him from influencing the start of the motion of the offence. And uh, if there's enough pressure there, he gives it up to the smaller players. Then the toughest assignment he has is to try and prevent it from getting back to Kukoc. Because most of the plays here are going to start with Kukoc. He'll be the man, it'll be the, the, the player who will make the penetration pass, the penetration drive. Uh, 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 Vankovic, that's the small Vankovic, or uh, Alanovic will be the ones that will be the receivers on the perimeter to take the perimeter shot. So Vlahov needs to work hard to try to prevent the ball coming back from Kukoc. The other players can do the work. Lindsay, what about the attitude of the Australians coming into this game? They had two games first up that they had to win for vital to go through to the second round. This is a game they don't really have to win as far as the, the whole scheme of things goes. Will they feel perhaps a little looser going into this one? Yes, I'm sure they will. That The Cuba game was life or death, and uh, that's when the emotions get you, and you, you're worried about being a little bit too conservative, making mistakes. You can be a little bit uh, uh, inhibited of, of using your natural play. This is one of those games where you can come into it really with a feeling that you've got nothing to lose. They do have another message, though, that they want to try to uh, uh, perhaps uh, get some revenge from the... Uh, embarrassment that we had in Barcelona and proved that that particular margin in that game was not a true reflection on the difference between these teams. Yes, of so course, they, that they do have a mission in this game. Then. That's right. Well, I don't think this will be 40 points today. Well, we certainly hope not, and uh, we certainly hope we've got a positive result. For the Aussies, they've started off in extra fine fashion in the opening four minutes, 10 plays seven. The Boomers in the lead. Lahoff looking for the steal from behind, and Kukots has fouled on the way to the hoop. Disappointed in himself for not making the first time shot, but he'll go to the line to shoot a pair. Once again, Kukoc is capable of doing so many things there. He was able to receive the pass, a good uh, crossover step and power to the basket. And uh, as I said before, that the, the, the problem for Vlahov in keeping the ball away from him is a monumental task. Lindsay, we just saw a, a progress score on the screen. Canada leading Russia 33-28 at Cops Coliseum, where we just left in Hamilton. Now, that is a crunch game for the Australians as well. That will depend on who joins Australia in one of the pools. Well, that, uh, that game is very similar to this one. Both teams come into the match 2-0, and oh, and the winner of Canada-Russia goes to number one in their pool, and the winner of this one goes to number one in our pool. Well, we'll try and uh, keep you up to date with all that as this game goes on, but uh, there's plenty of excitement here. 10-8 after Kukots' free throw. And Andrew Gay is looking to post up down low. Shane Hill with a long three-point effort that doesn't go. And Kukots it is who cleans it up off the board. And the big guard brings it down to be met by Andrew Vlahov again. Looking to take him down low, but they double him low. And a big 
turnover there that uh, mishandled from Stoyan Brankovic and Vlahov hands off for Heel again for two and Shane Heel, the Brisbane Bullets guard makes it two more for the Aussies and they lead it 12 points to eight. What that a bright a, start. A good confident shot there in the transition. There was no, uh, no second thoughts about pumping that one up. It's a good decision. Kukoc uh, leading Vlahov all over the floor and out side shot that doesn't fall for Vladan Alanovic. Andrew Gay is looking to take his man on. That's Josip Brankovic and they go inside to Mark Bradke. Talk about take your man on. A little hook shot there from Mark Bradke after he showed the fake. Results in a foul and it's a foul against Stoyan Brankovic and the more pressure Lindsay they can put on Brankovic the whole better this scheme of things can be. Well I thought that uh, Mark Bradke handled that situation very very well. I mean uh, the Rankovic can be an intimidating factor on the inside, but uh, he, he maintained his composure. Another good crossover step and drew the foul. So two shots to Vlahov to try and extend the Australian lead, and he's sweet off the free throw line. So they're three of three off the stripe, the Aussies. I'm sorry, I called him uh, Andrew Vlahov in the excitement of things. Mark Bradke. 14 points to 8. Well, that's better than the courtside announcer. He called him Ulahoff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess uh, we all have difficulty with uh, some foreign names, but uh, Andrew uh, Blahoff is not too foreign to us. Turn around from Vrankovic that doesn't fall, and Tony Ronaldson chips in for the board, and the Australians trying to make numbers up the floor. Blahoff behind the back. Plenty of confidence there. Inside they go to Blahoff, the feed from Bradkey, but plenty of intimidation from the big defensive effort of oh, Bradkey again gets it up there but not in oh well, gee where's oh. They, that's an offensive foul it has to be and they left Mark Bradkey on the floor the booze go up from the crowd here but we'll have a look at that again I hope we have no oh, control over what they show but have a look at it I'm sure they show that again and you just cannot do that when you've got the basketball oh. getting rid of Bradkey Lucky um, that he went across his chest. Uh, uh, officially, that uh, that should almost be called an intentional foul. If you do that and miss, it's a violation. You do that and hit, well, that can be an intentional foul. And it can be a broken jaw, too. And we've got another foul. This goes against Josip Brankovic. So the Croatians starting to lose it just a little bit here. Another quick foul against them. Players racking them up, and all this helps the Boomers' effort. The Aussies being paid for their endeavours here. Let's see if they can pay with a basket. Andrew Gaze for three, launches it, but too long. Now they'll dig into their defensive efforts again. Been fairly predictable so far. It's either Kukots taking it to the hoop or they go low into Raja or Vrankovic. Frank, it's uh, Raja on the turnaround and makes the two. Well, Tony Ronaldson was trying hard to deny that pass on the inside, but the, uh, the greatest strength and position of uh, Raja prevailed. And Once you get the ball on the inside there, then it's uh, very, very hard to contain the opposition. Almost a turnover. Well done, Mark Bradke, to keep that alive and have the presence of mind to slap it to Shane Hill. Ronaldson for three. He can take that, but can't hit it this time. And the... <laughs> Croatians spill it over the end line. Stoyan Brankovic had a pretty easy little pick up there and just a, a sign of a, a little bit of nerves out there. It's a big uh, time and maybe this big crowd is putting pressure on their own team. Into Gaze and Josip Brankovic has been set out there obviously to guard Andrew Gaze. They made a change in the starting five. Little jump hook from Tony Ronaldson that goes down. 16 points to 10. The Boomers lead it. Well, we know Tony Ronalds can do that little dinky jump hood on the baseline, but uh, we haven't really had the uh, information as whether he can do it against the likes of Rankovic. That was a great move there. We've got the information now. We've got the information that Kukots can shoot as well, but unsuccessfully that time as Bradkey pulls in yet another board. Up to Blahoff and can't quite score at the tip that comes from Ronaldson, doesn't go down. Sort of uh, shot that the Australians have to make and immediately... Croatia to Svetlana and comes back and punish them at the other end. And it's still a four-point lead to Australia. 16-12 have been playing eight minutes here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Has to be a foul on that play. No basket, the referee says. 
nothing on the continuation. The American referee immediately said no basket, but he turned his back before the ball went through the hoop. Well, uh, to get a continuation, you've got to get a start. I mean, that foul was uh, on the drive, so uh, that would have been a very big bonus if we get the call on that one as well. Well, he's made it good by the fact he didn't, even, didn't give free throws for it, so he's obviously being consistent with calling it prior to the shot going up. Not this time for Mark Bradke, but a tip from Ray Borner, who's come in. Borner taking out Tony Ronaldson from the lineup, and Australia calling on all their experience here. Good start from the rookie Ronaldson, but Borner, they go to the experience in the big games like this. Shane Hill, another World Championship rookie out there, having to play some defence. And underneath the Dino Raja, the big body has come in. And who's the foul on? It's against the goal team. Well, Ray Borner got a break defensively there with some good help from Mark Bradby. Uh, Borner probably should have shut out the baseline once that uh, drive was made. Then uh, Mark Bradby could have been involved in the foul situation there, but uh, avoided the basket but threw the foul. So Dino Raja heads for the uh, Croatian bench and there's the scoreboard, 16 points to 12 in a terrific start for Australia, eight and a half minutes into the game and we're playing here at Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens, the home of the famous uh, Toronto Maple Leafs hockey team. Lindsay, I was looking at the ceiling before and they've got their Stanley Cup pennants all over the ceiling but it's a long time since they put one up there. Well, it's a little bit like Madison Square Garden and... Uh or the Boston Garden where you, the, the Celtics have uh, got all of their pennants up and uh, it's very impressive when you see in a sport like ice hockey and the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs have uh, won so many championships but it's been a long time between drinks. It you know, started in 1932, a lot of flags there, 3, 6, 9, 11 flags to 1967 but they haven't made it since 1967. Came close last year but uh, didn't quite make it. Well, there's Barry Barnes, and uh, what a job for him at home. I mean, the biggest job for him right down there is making himself heard to his players because uh, the noise level in this team is huge. Mark Bradkey having a bit to say on the bench, and uh, manager Tom York having a bit to say as well, and uh, Tom doing a, a great yeah. job here with this Australian Boomers team. Well, uh, Tom won't be involved in any of the strategy, of course. He might be involved in the encouragement. But I noticed at the, uh, the other end with the Croatian teams that uh, Coach Jerger there, he was really trying to get his players to calm down and to get them to take a little bit more time with their play, uh, perhaps take a little bit of the emotion out of the game. It's pretty hard to do that when 10,000 screaming fans here. But they've just been uh, surprisingly uh, small percentage in their shooting considering at last night they shot 80%. But, uh, right now they're only shooting at, uh, at 40%. Australia shooting at 33%, but and they have the lead in the basketball game, and there's a miss from the uh, the red lineup. Heel into Borna, and the shot was there for Mark Bradke again, but he decides to go inside with it, and it falls for Andrew Vlahov. So another chance here to score for the Aussies. They'll take every one of these with glee. Gay's trying to get loose of Josef Brankovic and Shane Heal all the way to the hoop. Well, that is a courageous well, drive. Well, that's almost an in-your-face job there with Brankovic, uh, the intimidator. But Shane Heal wasn't having any of that, just uh, softly caressed it off the board, gave it a good arch. I think it was a surprise factor there too. So certainly surprised me, and I'm sure it surprised the defence that he had the cheek to come in there. But scoring at the other end is Dino Raja. And Lindsay, you can see by the emotion from Dino Raja there just how serious this game is. Well, they're certainly taking it very seriously. And for Australia, they want to control the tempo of the game and to control the tempo of the game with the defence. Uh, that's twice Ray Borner has made a defensive uh, faux pas there. The first time he allowed his man drive baseline, that time he allowed him to get the ball close to the basket. I'm not uh, minimising the difficulty there is. It just emphasises how tough it is at this level. <laughs> Well, couldn't make the three-point play. Andrew Gay is looking to take his man on and make him play some defense, see if he can force a foul out of him. Andrew would love to step to the free-throw line a few times, particularly on the free-throw shooting form he's in. Borner, relay pass on to Bradke, who's a long way from the hoop. Spreading it out, Hill had a quick glance at the three and decided not to. They run some time off the clock. The clock comes down to five seconds now. Gay will have to pump it up there. Gets it up off the baseline. He was aware of the time, but uh, nothing doing there for the Australians. Again, it's Raja who gets down the floor so quickly for a seven-footer, doesn't he? 
Yeah, we've got a little bit of a start on Ray Bourne at that time, who was trying to fight for rebound, a little bit slow to get back. I think uh, Shane Hill might have been the one to hold the fort there temporarily, if he could, to, until Ray Bourne got back there. Croatia closes to within two. And this deliberate offensive set again from the Australians. Oh, Gaze was open, open the there cut. for a second. But uh, Borna couldn't uh, make the pass. And we've got a foul against the defence again. So they're certainly racking them up. That'll be the sixth team foul against Croatia. It's also three against Josip Brankovic. Three against Josip Brankovic. And that's one against Tony Kukot. So... Brankovic, who's been sent out there to, to guard Andrew Gaze. They might have to uh, shuffle people in and out on him. Vlahov gets in a shot there and makes room for himself, but not enough room there to grab a rebound as Raja pulls one in. Drive to the hole and almost a two there to Zurich. And it will be a Croatian ball out of bounds. In they come. Three-point bomb goes up from the corner. And Danko Svetichanen for Croatia. Gives them the lead at 19 points to 18. First lead of the ball game to the team in red, white and blue. The crowd go absolutely nuts here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Shane Hill with a huge three in reply well, to grab the, the lead back for Australia. Well, that gets the crowd sitting down again, and uh, that was a great play from Shane Hill. One of the things that's difficult for the Australian team where they're normally trying to run screens and get free away from the ball, they're finding all sorts of difficulty accepting the screen as the players will push and fight over the top. It's very hard to do some work on the inside. Another foul against the Croatians as you see the general Phil Smythe come in. And uh, Shane Hill is being rewarded for that last three with a seat on the bench. But uh, I think this is a purely a tactical change right here and a rest for Shane Hill who's been out there for 11 and a half minutes with that all-important job of bringing the ball up the floor. And they brought the experience of Smythe in. Borner was open momentarily there. Bradkey wants it down low, gets it from Gaze. And Gaze has to go a long way from the hoop to get the ball back. Clock turns down under 10 seconds. They run Bradkey on the inside oh. and misses the dunk. Josef Brankovic away on the layup and makes it. Again, one of those four-point swings. This team will be as good as any in the world at punishing you for making mistakes. That's two four-point plays we've had in the game. That is two that we should have got. Two that the other team provides you with a punishment for missing. Blahoff. Hits the three, and another three-point lead for Australia. Well, Blahoff was due to get a break. Uh, he's, uh, he's had a couple of unlucky shots there that rimmed out. That time it was uh, in his favour. Gets the roll. So Andrew Vlahoff grabbing the lead back for Australia. Every time the Australians oh. score, they're quiet in the crowd, but then, of course, at the other end, it's a different matter. Thank you, Svetichanen. Another two for Croatia. One-point game, and there's the time remaining. Seven and a half minutes. So Svet Australia with three of the starters still out there. Svetlana with a good size advantage. That was a good example, as I was talking about before, with the way that they fight through the screens and make it tough for you to make a cut. Well, Svetlana so, uh, called for the foul on that occasion. He's going to put Smythe on the line to shoot the one and one. But we're going to have a timeout first here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Australia with a 24-23 break as we watch uh, the replay on that last Svetlana and reverse layup underneath the hoop. And uh, Smythe, there's not much he can do about that with the size factor involved. But it's been a, a great start for Australia, Lindsay. Well, I, I think this is as good as what we could possibly have hoped for. Uh, getting a good start, there's enough pressure there for the, um, uh, for the defence. And uh, the great thing is that the Australians are not intimidated by the reputation or the talent or the size of the Croatians. And they're playing their game. It's a very physical game. The work that they have to do in fighting through screens and combating the holding and pushing and shoving. The referees clearly have allowed them to play that, and it's going to have to be fairly strong. That like last play there, they did call a foul. That was a fairly heavy foul. Uh, Australia would like them to be a little bit more sensitive on those calls, but uh, by and large, a very good start for Australia. Uh, the fitness will play a part as it gets later in the game. 
the depth of talent coming off the bench with Phil Smythe coming and gives Shane Heal a break. Ray Bourne has been able to rotate with Andrew Vlahoff. I'm not too sure how long it'll be before Mark Bragg can need a spell because none of those players can see out 40 minutes at this tempo. Well, Andrew Gay has had to play 40 minutes last night and he'll be called upon to play a lot of minutes here tonight. So uh, he's certainly going to feel it in the legs in the second part of the uh, second half. But when the players come back to the floor, they leave the bench now. We'll see Phil Smythe shoot the one and one And uh, just by way of explanation, I know we've got a lot of new viewers today and we haven't seen a lot of basketball. And uh, probably those who are confused who are used to watching the National Basketball League. But uh, in the two 20-minute halves, each team is allowed up to seven fouls. Once you hit the eighth foul, as uh, Croatia has now, you get to shoot one and one. That is, you shoot the first, and if you make it, you get a second. But if you miss the first, that's all she wrote. Now, uh, you, Croatia has eight fouls, and Australia has six at this stage. So Australia still has one foul to give. Now, what a record that is, Lindsay. 345 games for Australia. And still doing it as well as ever. Lining up at the free throw line. All the pressure in the world here at uh, Maple Leaf Gardens with this hostile crowd against him and lining up and hitting a pair of free throws to stretch Australia's lead to three. 26 plays, 23. And he has to uh, guard Alan Komasets, who's come in for uh, the Croatians. Josip Brankovic still playing with those three fouls. Kukots. Go to the hoop and use the body so well. A Vika Zuric for Croatia trims that lead to one. That's where most of the Croatian points have come from so far. The backdoor cut from Andrew Gaze. Smythe held back on the pass. Saw there was a bit of danger in it. Posting up low, Ray Borner. Looking to dump on the inside and then takes the baseline jumper and shot it about a foot short of the basket. Croatia with a chance to take the lead right here. Had the lead once. Australia pinched it straight back. Kukots spins through the hoop. Can't make it, though. It keeps the ball alive and it falls in the hands of Smythe. Looks up and saw Gaze in front of him, but also saw four red singlets and pulled it back. Gaze looking for the drive to the hole. No basket, the referee says. He calls a travel. Andrew's probably a little unfortunate there. He got a bump on the way through as well. It's a little bit hard to maintain your footwork when you get a bit of a bump, but there's a little bit each way there. I think Andrew was forcing that, uh, that drive and uh, could have gone either way. No serious damage. Also trying to force the fourth foul out of uh, Josip Rankovic. And that's unusual, for Kuk over. that's unusual for Kukoc to make a passing error like that. He's uh, complaining about the fact that the player was held. There's a lot of that going on in this game. So Tony Ronaldson back into the ball game. Ray Borner is out. So the lineup with Smythe and Gaze in the backcourt. Vlahov, Bradke and uh, Tony Ronaldson up front. So the starting front line is back in business. Gaze, no shot there for him. Quick shift of the ball to Vlahov. Tries to take it down the middle and grabs the rebound back. Andrew Vlahov and it's oh. all for him. It hung up there for a long Gee, time. It looked like it wanted to come out for a while. And uh, once again, I think that was a very hard-earned basket. A lot of pressure on the defence. Vlahov uh, handled the pressure well. Well, Andrew had his problems last night in the Cuban game in the early oh. part of it, but he's having a, a great start to this one. Radja. Uh, Three-point shot that comes from Vrankovic. That's Josef Vrankovic from a long way out. Hits the three and ties the ball game up at 28 points apiece. Gay is looking for the screen and roll with Bradkey, and it's a long way for Mark Bradkey. Can't hit it, and Josef Brankovic grabs it again, but was going to try the baseball pass and held it back. Now Brankovic becomes the ball handler to Kukots. Komasets, Smythe's on him. Backing the ball up, Raja trying to back Bradkey up, trying to hold his ground, but just too smart. The Boston Celtic centre, Dino Raja, makes two and grabs the lead for Croatia again. Third lead for them. Fifth lead change of the ball game. Smythe, and we've got a foul, and it's gone against Josip Frankovic. Should be number four on him. 
we can see a, uh, a strong pattern in the way that the uh, Croatians are playing. It's a very hard pressure on the man trying to make the play away from the basket, fighting through screens. And at the other end of the floor, that uh, it's a very simple offense. That you don't have to worry too much about what goes on. Get the ball on the inside. As soon as you draw some help from the outside, as Frankovic showed there before, they kick it out, the man can make the automatic three. The only way you can defend that is to stop it from getting on the inside in the first place, and that is a very difficult task. The foul, uh, in fact, was called against number six, Komaset, so uh, Brankovic stays with his three fouls, but two clean ones off the free throw line for Andrew Gaze, and the scores are locked together again. Vlahov uh, rarely has to guard someone this far from the basket. But again, it's Raja trying the same play and a turnaround and draws the foul out of Mark Bradke. Now that will be the seventh team foul for Australia. So now they go to the bonus situation, but four minutes to go in the first half. In fact, uh, it's a two-shot foul. You could almost call this an NBA-type offense where they isolate the man for the one-on-one. -on -one. If you draw defensive help, they flip it out to a man who can be automatic from the perimeter requires very quick hands on the outside to rotate and cover the man or a very, very strong defensive effort one-on-one. -on -one. Raja, instead of trying to get the ball inside close to the basket, has come out along the baseline to receive it and then just works his man one-on-one -on -one as he's ready to pivot and he gets close to the basket. Back he needs to hold him out further if he can. Raja's first successful free throw. He's one of four from the stripe and Croatia in front again. Ronaldson... Looked a long one. The defence closed on him. Brad Key. Raja will go all the way to him now. He's seen him attempt a couple from the outside and make one. Australia using the clock again. It comes down to five seconds as Blahoff rolls it off. Andrew Gaze was <laughs> willing that one in at the baseline. It didn't fall for him. And there's Andrew who is almost a cheerleader for that ball. Timeout again. Three and a half minutes to go in the first half. And uh, for those who are watching their first game of this 12th World Championship of Basketball, wondering why there are so many timeouts, there are four timeouts forced in each half of the game. Uh, four timeouts forced for television purposes by the, uh, the NBA who are running this tournament in uh, conjunction with FIBA. So uh, the coaches have plenty of work to do. Almost uh, give a coach laryngitis, something like this. Uh, Lindsay, they have to talk more than they do in most games. That's right. It's, um, it's certainly tough under these circumstances. But what a wonderful contest this is. There's some problems to be solved, both physically and strategically. And uh, right now, of course, as the score indicates, it's near enough to even. The Australians have to try to handle the big guys around the basket, close to that. It's a, a tough one-on-one -on -one assignment, whether you're receiving the ball from the pass or whether the big man just drives the ball in not necessarily quickly, but uh, jockeys their way through by reverse pivoting and powering. And the worry is that if you try to help out on that too early, they'll turn the ball over in the, the perimeter play. But uh, the best thing I think that can happen there for the Australians is to work very physically on denial. And uh, if they contain them to a moderate percentage in that, in that half-court game, it then depends on the Australians having an efficient offense themselves. Right now, their shooting percentage is a blow what is necessary but there's so much pressure on every play, you can expect that. The question will be whether Croatia will be able to maintain the same sort of pressure throughout the game as well. A few cuts away from the ball, just try to get some pressure releases to open up a few more uh, clear shots at the basket will help Australia. But the Croatian's defence right now is very difficult to handle and the, the, the matter will be is whether they can sustain that. Well, as they line up for the one-on-one uh, -on -one again from uh, Andrew Vlahov looking at the, some of the key stats in the game Dino Raja leads the Croatian scoring with 13 points, 13 of the 31 the Australians have spread the scoring pretty well with Gays, Bradkey with 6 apiece and Andrew Vlahov with 5 the Australians sponsored by Caltex for this tournament and uh, we welcome the sponsorship of the Caltex uh, company getting behind the efforts of Australian basketball and Andrew Vlahov gives Australia that one-point lead again. Josip Brankovic in low to Raja again. You can almost count on them going in that direction. And stepping to the hole and scoring is Komasets. 
and the lead changes hands again. Croatia 33, Australia 32. Blahoff underneath to Ronaldson was a super pass. Well, they're pretty rare when the uh, the player was unable to fight through that screen, and uh, you wondered whether the feeder was able to see him early enough. Ronaldson did the job. So again, a lead change. I'm not going to try and keep track of them anymore. They'll be the way this game is going. We're going to see plenty of them. Shane Hill getting ready to check back in again for the Australians. Slip it out into the hands of Kukots and steps and shoots and nothing doing but it's a Croatian rebound to Adrian Komasets. 35-34 so Komasets grabbing a couple of baskets for Croatia to give them a lead again. Smythe to Vlahov in low they go to Bradke to put some pressure on Raja but the pressure was all on Bradke he had to put some arch on that to get it over the top of the big man and away comes Croatia again oh Smythe left on his back and normally called a charge but not on this occasion count the two to Komasets and Vlahov leaves the ball behind so a turnover his problems Komasets again so four straight baskets to Ariane Komasets and Croatia jumped to a five-point break at 39-34. They busted out so quickly. And Australia was in the lead just moments ago. Bradke makes the jump hook. And away comes Kukoc. Again, not that time for Josip Frankovic. Well, I think uh, you can give credit to the Croatians for getting that break. But you can also have some sympathy for the Australians there. Phil Smythe was doing a good job defensively. Got knocked down with size and power, took a, uh, was taken advantage of at the other end of the floor. Australia looked like they were ready to reply. Little fumble that can be had under this pressure. Opens up the little break for uh, Croatia. Now, five-point margin does seem to be big, but uh, it does need a pressure now on Australia to get that back because once Yugoslavia get a break and they control the tempo, that'll be much more difficult for Australia. Lindsay, I talked about last occasion there was a timeout about four timeouts being forced in a, in a half this time the, the timeout was definitely called by the coach yes you see what uh, what was important there that the Croatians can develop a little bit of momentum and uh, it, it would be very dangerous for Australia to try to get back that advantage or that lead straight away and cause another area they, they have to make sure every time they're down on offense it comes a high percentage play minimize the turnovers contest the boards because any time they don't contest the rebounds then the Croatians are able to get it out and run the transition game very, very effectively. We've got to confine them to a half-court game. And that means contesting every rebound and trying to improve the offensive percentage in our shooting. It's still at uh, 34%, and that's below what is needed. Croatia's up to 56%. That's too high for us. There's an indication of the kind of support that's in this crowd as we pull out and get a, a better look at it. Still uh, plenty of empty seats but uh, I would reckon this place is about 75% full and uh, most of those are in for the team in red, white and blue. Have a look at that rebound underneath from Comisets and that's what started his, well that was the second of his run of four baskets and the, part of the shot that should have been made from Gaze, stick back from uh, Mark Bradke and that stops the run. Now the defensive resources of the Australians will be called upon. A minute 13 out from half time. They've stopped the run. Now they've got to make a couple of defensive stops and, and score at the other end. It's back to three points. Kukots. And uh, you've got to pay tribute to the job that Andrew Vlahoff has done on Kukots. Josef Brankovic takes it the hole and scores. They can come at you in so many ways. Andrew Gaze looking to take uh, Kukots and... Uh, his man Rankovic on then. Shane Hill back in the ball game, slings one up there, and away come the Croatians again. Raja straight down the middle they go with Evika Judic. The fast break is really killing Australia at the moment. Seven point break as Australia pulls it up. There's very little differential between the game clock and the, and the uh, shot clock here. So Shane Hill milking it right down but Australia really needs the score on this play right here so there's the clock you can keep it on your, your eye on the screen they get the shot up Andrew Gaze hits the three 
and they really needed that. No time for Croatia to score before the half. But what a big basket right there for Andrew Gaze to give them the momentum going into the break. A scoreline of 43 plays 39. Lindsay, that was a big basket. Yes, it was. And what a wonderful game this has been. There's four points the difference in a very, very high standard game. Australia's shooting percentage has been a little bit below what they need. But their defence has been committed. It's been a very physical and emotional uh, effort. Uh, when you think of the matchups, Raja, Bradkey, Brankovic, Blahoff, Kukoc, quality players there. We're, we're talking about uh, equivalent to the best in the world. And to be four-point margin in this game is very, very encouraging. I think that they've still got more left in it. And the, this margin can be reversed in the second half if just a few of those shots drop. OK, Lindsay, we'll give our voices a break as we try and strain to be heard over the top of this crowd right here at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto where Croatia at half-time in this Pool B game 43 lead Australia, 39 as we take a break. First half stats as the players come back onto the floor. And Lindsay, the one that stands out to me is the fact that Australia has actually out-rebounded Croatia. Yes, that's right. Uh, they've done extremely well on the offensive boards. Uh, getting 10 offensive boards against a team like uh, Croatia is a tremendous boost, and you can credit Andrew Vlahoff and uh, Mark Bradkey for most of those. But they're in there competing. Uh, the, but it's not just the rebounds sometimes, it's the, uh, it's the key ones that count. A couple of missed shots allowed uh, the Croatians to get rebounds that led to fast breaks, and uh, they're the ones that you want to compete. OK, about to get underway, because oh. the key stat is the one that's on the scoreboard, 43-39. Croatia leading it as a result of that three from Andrew Gaze right before the half-time break that trimmed the lead back to four. But uh, Croatia uh, not able to score first time down the floor. And a good chance for some of these players to rest at half-time. I imagine there would have been some tired people out there. Tony Ronaldson scores the first basket of the second half for the Boomers, and it's 43-41. Well, that's a major basket because Australia definitely needs a good start to this second half to ensure that Croatia doesn't get a little bit of momentum and uh, you know, a six or eight point lead in a game like this is going to be very, very difficult to recover. And Raja turns the ball over, gives the ball back to the Australians. So two times down the floor they've repelled Croatia and a chance here for Australia to tie the ball game up again or even take the lead if they can hit a three. Ronaldson in the corner to Vlahoff to take his man on, take him to the hole, can't make it. And uh, it's Ronaldson who gets it back for Australia. Gaze dumping it on the inside and they play with patience, keep the ball on the move. Oh, off the hands of Ronaldson, the feed from Vlahoff. Ronaldson was a bit hot for him. Oh, it was deflected by the defensive player on Vlahoff as well, so that made it hard to handle. And that's only the uh, Australia's fourth turnover, so... That's, that's a very good statistic at this stage of the game, especially against this level of defence as well. Especially against the team that will absolutely sting you for any turnover at the other end. Kukots resumes that battle here with Andrew Vlahoff and leaves the ball on the front of the rim and over the back. Maybe a foul on Dino Raja. In fact, it is. So Raja comes up for a foul, much to the uh, <laughs> annoyance of this huge crowd here. Well, so, again... They're not able to score. Here it is. Credit, credit the American referee for that. That's one that uh, just about every American referee will call, but they don't call, make that call too much in Europe. Into uh, Ronaldson was a tough one to pick up and scrambled it. And Bradke got a hand on that, and Andrew Gaze cleans up the crumbs and looks to take the defence on and then dump on the outside was a good decision. He gets his feet set for three and hits it again. You can't give Andrew Gaze that much time because while a lot of players will talk themselves out of a three, Andrew will just groove his way in with that, and the lead goes back to Australia after two minutes of the second half. They've started the second half like they started the first. Bradkey going all the way out to Kukots this time, and they dump on the outside. Same sort of play at the other end, and it works for them as well. The shot going down from Comisets. Mark Bradkey comes back with a huge smile all over his face. The Commissus is now five from five. With those types of shots, you wonder how long he can keep up that sort of percentage. But uh, great technique. Very cool player in a crisis. Dumping on the inside this time. 
to Stojan Brankovic, and Brankovic makes the dunk. They've kept Brankovic fairly quiet. In fact, that's his first points of the ball game. Bradke taking Brankovic on and has the shot blocked. Brankovic asks for the for it to go back the other way. But they've done a very good job on that man at the defensive end. 48 plays, 46 Croatia in front. And there's some worry lines on the coaching staff of the uh, Croatian team. An offensive foul called against Tony Ronaldson trying to set the pick. Substitution coming from the Croatian bench. And back comes Vladan Alanovic. Out goes Josef Brankovic. So we'll look to see who picks up uh, Andrew Gaze. It'll probably be Alanovic. Gaze in the meantime goes out on Comisets. Along the baseline they go. And too easy there for Dino Raja, the high scorer. He's got 15 for the game right now. He's the one they really haven't been able to stop. But they have aimed a lot of the offense at him. Ronaldson for three. Swiss. 50 plays, 49. So Australia closes to within one again. Time gone, three and a half minutes in the second half. Alanovic to Komasets, the man with the hot hand. Alanovic thought about the three, but they go baseline through Kukots. Not a particularly good shot, but followed up by Dino Raja. Pretty hard to stop when you've got a one-two punch like that. Well, what they have to stop is the drive in the first place to allow the man to take it that far. Andrew Gaze, that almost went down the shoot, but it spills to the Aussies and blow off. Ronaldson... Mm. First time shot, probably would have done better to move that ball on the perimeter. It's easy to say in hindsight, we got a foul against the Australians. It was uh, Andrew Blahoff was caught in no man's land on the way through with his back turned. But the, the foul was on Shane Hill there on the drive before the uh, collision at the finish. Uh, that was a very dangerous sign for uh, two quick threes going up for the Australian team. That's... Uh, you're really li living by the sword when you do that. But uh, it's all right if you've got some some uh, steadiness. Uh, the, the shot that was taken by Andrew Gaze earlier is typically the one that you want to take. But then a couple of quick ones there with no rebound. You lead to the fast break the other end of the floor. Very dangerous uh, signals there. And this, uh, this time out is, is very appropriate to get them back on track, stay with the half-court game, make a little adjustment defensively because uh, both Raja and Kukoc have been successful with the baseline drive three times in a row. That has to be contained. Three double-figure scorers for Australia. Andrew Gaze with 12, Tony Ronalds with 11, and uh, Mark Bradkey with 10. Bradkey's got uh, half a dozen rebounds to go with his 10 points. But the man doing the damage for Croatia is Stojan Brankovic with 17, and Komasets has 11. And there's uh, Tony Kutkots in the middle of your screen, star for the Chicago Bulls, but not getting his own way here at Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens, where he could be playing in the very near future with the uh, Toronto Raptors coming into the NBA. Andrew uh, Gay's on the bench and uh, Barry Barnes there with the instructions and done a very good job, uh, Coach Barnes, under a lot of pressure I mean, it hasn't been easy for him. They had that first game against Korea where he might have hoped to get a little bit of an armchair ride, but Australia only won that by two, and he had to work hard right to the finish. And then they were able to uh, regroup and come out and beat Korea, uh, Cuba last night and then back here against Croatia. So the quality of the opposition just goes up and up, and Australia is meeting all the challenges at the moment repel the challenges of Korea, then Cuba, and now taking on the might of Croatia. Blahoff out in the passing lane to stop that ball going to Kukots. Lesson for all defensive players. It's the best way to play defense is just keep the ball out of the hands of your man. Raja trying to back it in. Get the ball through Vrankovic's hands into Komasets. And down low they go. And again, it's Dino Raja. And it's just an indication of what sort of pressure the uh, is under out there. Have a look at the foul. It goes against Mark Bradke. And the boos go up from the crowd. I'm just uh, looking at the monitor. Uh, 
Lindsay, what's the ruling down there? Um, that was a technical foul. I didn't uh, there, there, see there that was, happen. Well, there was a foul called, and uh, what happened? They said there was no score. Complaint from the uh, uh, from the Croatians led to the technical. The foul was on the drive, not on the shot. They complained about that, so the technical. So as a result, at the other end, it's Andrew Gaze to shoot two. Plus possession from half court with it being a, a bench technical foul. And, and that was a bonus. So it could be a four or five point play here and Australia trail by just a point. Gaze along the baseline, but they can't go to him. They've covered that up pretty well. Oh, Tony Ronaldson setting the screen and the man went right over the top of it. Ariane Comisets. You might recall I mentioned the first half how well the Croatians fight over the top of screen. There's the screen to, to try and, <laughs> and try and deny the cutter from getting the ball. At that time, it was a very good screen. He never had time to fight over, but a very physical clash. And you just wonder how long they can keep that going. There's a lot of bodies finishing up on the floor in incidents like that. Might feel a little pain around the sternum when he wakes up tomorrow morning, but they go down to Blahoff, and it opened up for him momentarily then it closed again behind the back to Andrew Gaze over the top of the head to Vlahov so a little bit of showboat see if it comes up with two and block the shot from uh, Ronaldson was blocked by Dino Raja and Kukots Kukots called oh. for the offensive foul that is a big foul and it's inside of this crowd I hope we get to see it on replay but Kukots must have used his elbow to go around Andrew Vlahov. There's no complaint from the bench. We'll see if we can see the right elbow. There it is. Just came out there momentarily, but they just seem to let that go normally. Well, they, uh, they'll they give attention to that if someone's going towards the basket, but in a half-court game, it's unusual for that to be called. Three-point shot from Shane Hill that falls off the front of the rim. Raja vacuums up the rebound and sends Croatia away again clinging to a one-point lead and Australia trying to get into it. Kukots looking for Raja again. Ronaldson with the big job to try and stop him. Andrew Gaze trying to lend some help. They go on the outside and Gaze has to go back on defence. Now Kukots dumping down to the inside. Plenty of Australian bodies there, but they've picked out a foul. Referees looked at one another. It goes against Tony Ronaldson. I think the quality of this game is demonstrated by the fact whenever there's a three or four point margin, it's almost like a ten point margin in any other game. Getting a basket this end or the other end, it's, uh, it's similar to a breakthrough in tennis. And uh, saving a basket here can be so important. Uh, Croatia had to work very hard to find the open play. Blahoff uh, was forced to foul in trying to defend the shot. And this guy's automatic. Well... Australians, some key players starting to get into foul trouble now. That third one against Ronaldson, three against uh, Bradkey and three against Vlahov now. So that's the front line with three fouls apiece. For Croatia, Tony Kukoc has three. And Joseph Brankovic has three. So off the free throw line, the Croatians extend the lead to three. 54 plays 51. This now becomes a big play. Gaze looking to go back door and they go outside the heel. Ronaldson showing so much maturity. The players like Ronaldson and Hill who haven't been in this situation before. Oh, big hook shot there coming from Mark Bradke. Saved by Ronaldson. Three-point shot from Gaze is offline and Kukoc grabs the rebound. Alanovic for three for Croatia. Almost controlled, oh, but off Shane no. Hill. He just didn't have his eyes on it. And, uh, well, encouragement there from Coach Barry Barnes saying, hey, don't worry about it. It's OK. There's not much you can do about that. Just in case he uh, starts to get a little bit concerned about it. Komasets, the man who lit Croatia up in the first half to inspire that run. Dino Raja working in against Ronaldson. And Ronaldson forced a foul. That'll be number four on him. Now, here's trouble. They'll go to the bench for Ray Warner, I would think. Tony Ronaldson 
looks towards the bench as Ray Warner gets up as we watch the replay. Just so much pressure from the big man, Dino Raja, the Boston Celtics front court star, and Ronaldson takes a seat on the bench. Tony Ronaldson sits with 11 points, four fouls. Well, that's a pity for Tony Ronaldson. He did a very good job on a, a defensively on a very, very tough player. He needs to try to protect the baseline, but he did everything right. Just needed to try to withdraw from uh, trying to block the shot on that. Just make the shot as hard as possible. Trust that he misses it. Once he gets the ball there, be physical. Try to avoid the foul. It's too late now. He's got to have 4,000 on the bench. Is it's there another way of playing defence against him? Well, you've got to try to, to restrict him to use of the ball as much as possible. Force him out a little bit further away from the basket so that he takes more of those yo-yo dribbles before he gets within range. And, and that's on Shane Hill. Offensive foul on Shane Hill with a push-off. So the referee's being very, very consistent. The wry smile from Hill as he looked up at the referee and looked at the bench and said, yeah, I know I'm guilty. Vladan Alanovic. Australia uh, it could be in trouble here if, uh, well, a turnover Whoa. by the Croatians was fortunate because they led by five and another basket there would well, Ray, have given them a handy break. Ray Bourne got a break that time. He was defending Raja on the wrong side. He only had to hold the ball and that would have probably been a dunk. Lahoff springs loose Andrew Gaze. Bradkey wants it down low and sets the back screen. Setting his front screen this time. Using his body well on the inside. Borner in low. Good pass to Bradkey, but he's under some plenty of pressure in there. And three seconds is the call in the lane. The turnover. He gave him one fake. He gave him two fakes. He wasn't going to allow the third. So, again, it's danger time. But uh, Blahoff almost with a steal. As a fairly casual Tony Kukots didn't lead to the ball there. Look at the size that uh, Heel's giving away against Alanovic. Pull-up jumper from the free throw line. Tomasic, who's really been the hero for Croatia in this game. It's a seven-point break. This is the area of the game with uh, 12 and a half minutes remaining that Australia is going to have to dig so deep. Can't afford this team to get away from them. You just will not be able to reel them in. Three-point shot from Blahoff that's short. And Kukoc yeah. sets Croatia off again. Again, it's Raja. How many times has he got away on the fast break? They clean it up for a second effort. Kukoc steps to the hoop. Raja again for two. Oh, and a steal. No. Ray Borner threw the pass to Komasic. Raja again. Now there's big trouble. 11-point game. The crowd has gone crazy. We can't see the game for Croatian flags. Well, that was the big danger I was concerned about with the Australian team. A travel call against the Andrew Gaze. They to get this lead back too quickly. Push the ball inside, take the early shot, try and force the break. Lead to an error that is deadly, deadly serious against a team of this calibre. And look at this crowd go absolutely crazy as they realise Croatia, even though we're uh, 11 and a half minutes out from the end of the game, may have just pinched a winning break right there. Australia been playing with them and taken the lead in the first half and really came at them strongly in the early part of the second half, but that 11-point lead is going to be very difficult to pull in. In a game, the way the game is being played, an 11-point lead, not normally a big lead, Lindsay, but uh, in this one it is. That's right, because scoring is so difficult yourself. You know that every time you score, it's a bonus with this level of defence. And this is amazing. It's, it's just two relatively minor errors. In normal circumstances, you would allow that. A rather ill-advised shot from and Andrew Vlahoff, and at the other end, an ill-advised attempt to try to make a transition basket from Ray Bourne on that pass. Two errors, turns a competition where there's only six points to difference into what appears to be a blowout. 10 point, 11 points is not normally a blowout, but against a team of this level when scoring is so difficult, it's now going to be very, very hard for us to work this back again. But I, I think the message will be, don't expect to be able to get this back straight away. It's going to take a lot of work, work it back one basket at a time, save a basket, make a basket, 
be a little bit more price, uh, be precise about the half court game to get the man open. We have to identify who is the target, who is the man that's going to get it done. Is it to be Bradkey on the inside, Andrew Gaze on the outside, Shane Hill to take the perimeter shot when the defence is drawn inside. There's got to be a pattern to how we're going to score. Well, that pattern hopefully will have been established in the last minute and a half, but. Uh, Gee, this guy, Dino Raja, is the man who's done all the damage. 23 points against his name. I'm amazed, Lindsay, at how he's been able to get out on the end of the fast break at his size. Well, when you've got other players capable of rebounding as well, and with his foot speed and power, that's not too surprising. But I, I give a lot of credit to, to Komasic as well. He's batting 100%. He hasn't missed yet. So you, you've got that sort of uh, efficiency in your game. You've got a hell of a weapon. Yes, a very powerful weapon that has uh, given Croatia an 11-point margin in this game as they go to Rajar again. This time he misses. And, oh, gee, that was almost cut out too. Andrew Gaze showing the dribble there to uh, Alanovic and keeping it alive, driving to the hoop and scoring two. And he had the opportunity to stop and prop and hit the three but went for the percentage play. Just as you were talking about, and they go in to look like a 1-3-1 one, one zone alignment here. Yes, they've got to do something because they're, they're getting uh, too much advantage from uh, the, the Croatians from that power game. Rajar needs to be contained by more than one player. They can do that better in the zone. At least get a look at it and see what they do against it. They can't hit the mm. outside shot, and that's always the danger when you're playing a zone. But uh, this is the sort of team that can hit plenty from out there. Kukoc lines up outside, Rankovic on the inside. They'll make the targets inside to open someone in the, on the exterior. The long bomb goes up and you talk about uh, a miss, there's one from Komasets. They force them into the outside shot and a miss, which is the object of that zone defence. Now let's see if Australia can score at the other end. Gaze to heel in a two-man game. Borna setting the screens on the cut. Sets the screen for Andrew Gaze, but they surround him. Keeping his dribble alive. Running some time off the clock. It's down to five seconds to go. They have to be aware of the clock. Gaze is. And hits the three. So Andrew Gaze in two plays gets five back of that 11 points. It's 62 plays, 56. Perhaps that was the instruction of that timeout to try and find the target. Andrew might have been given the license to, uh, to make something happen. Gaze now has 19 points for Australia. They keep that zone going, why shouldn't they? But that's the thing that can hurt them. From the corner, Komasets. He missed with one, but he didn't miss the second. Gaze to Borna. Eight-point break again. Australia with all the work to do. Croatia maintains their man-to-man -man defense. And Australia trying to set the picks. Very difficult to set picks against players this size because it is very wearing on the body and hey, Shane Hill turns it over, away goes Komasets again, lays it in for two more and Ariane Komasets has 19 points for Croatia well, Shane quick. Hill under pressure there made the mistake of putting the ball to the floor the quick hands of the defence was able to find a steal there and they are just so effective at uh, punishing you for a mistake so after they got it back to six, Australia, it's now a 10-point break again. 66 plays, 56. Eight minutes, 40 left on the clock. Bradkey takes on the defence. Nothing doing. And it will... Oh, change of mind almost from the referee. I thought he pointed two ways. In fact, I'm sure he pointed Australia's way. But uh, Australia uh, knew it was out off them. They went to the other end. And a change in the lineup. In comes Danko Svetichanin. So an indication of the sort of pressure Croatia is on here. They're not uh, going right deep into the bench. Australia has used uh, eight players. Similarly, Croatia, three-point shot. Not that time. Not that time for Ariane Komasets. Well, Svetichanin's in there to, uh, to try to punish Australia's zone defence. He's a uh, very smart player, plays in... Uh, in Madrid, actually, in the uh, Spanish National League. Noted for his three-point shooting. Borna to heel. Blahov 
in the corner to Borner as Australia spreads the offence out. Almost a shot there for Bradkey, but it was out of his range. Three-point bomb from Shane Hill is off the front of the rim. Bradkey pokes it back up there for another two. And those offensive rebounds have been fairly scarce the second half. Well, Mark Bradkey, who had uh, half a dozen rebounds at the break, has eight now. So he's only been able to grab uh, two in 12 minutes of the second half. Australia keeping the zone going, trying to force the Croatians to shoot from the outside. Stepping to the hoop. That man, Thomas Etz again. It's another way to break up a zone. Step through the seams. The worry about this for Australia as well is that they can't force the pressure on that. Croatia is able to uh, use a little bit of the clock each time. There's not much pressure on them in the way that they can uh, handle the ball around the perimeter of the zone, be selective on the penetration. It's a big ask for Australia to stay in that zone for very long. Brad Key made the effort to go to the hoop and just wasn't able to finish it off. But Comisets on the end of the break again and two more. The Croatian fans go nuts at Maple Leaf Gardens. 12-point lead again. Heartbreaking for the Aussies when they work so hard at one end. Lose the ball and it comes back at you so quickly. Gaze ignores the screen from Borna. Into the corner to Vlahov. Good ball moving from Australia, but just as good a block from Brankovic. As Kukot's out there on Gaze, ready to double team into whatever opportunity, a good drive from Andrew Gaze to flip it up, and a tip on the end of it. So just some tremendous skill there from Andrew Gaze to go around one of the premier players in the world in Tony Kukot's. Sure, he missed the layup, but had the presence of mind to go back and stick it in. I think that was almost like a self-assist. The, the, the shot was a prayer. I think, but, uh, uh, I think the dad's being a little bit critical here. <laughs> but we'll leave him to it. Yeah. Underneath the Frankovic, one of the very few opportunities that Stoyan Frankovic has had, and he slams it down the hole to get this big crowd going again. Long bomb goes up. Shane Hill for three. 72 plays 63. So Australia keep it under double figures. Remember, this is a team that beat them in Barcelona by 40 points. And time's running out a little bit for the Australians as well. With the uh, five minutes to go it's now. Roger. 11 points the difference. Each time down the floor, it's absolutely essential for Australia to prevent Croatia from scoring. And equally, each time down the floor, they need to score themselves just to get it level. The shot, the three-point shot was blocked. And Mark Bradkey picked up the scraps and sticks it back in. Now like they a, must save this basket. What a good uh, garbage man that he is. 74 plays 65 and two players have 48 points in total for Croatia 25 points to Raja 23 to Komasets in the corner Lindsay Gaze talked about Danko Svetichanen to come in and shoot against the zone that's what he did he had a three again that 12 point break they've had it out to 12 a couple of times now Bradkey shoots from long range and that will be out of bounds and hit the support at the back of the uh, of the backboard and it will be a Croatian ball from the backcourt well Barry Barnes wasn't too pleased at Mark Frank he taken that shot from the 15 feet range that shot is almost impossible to rebound against a team like Croatia and really they want uh, Brett the inside to do the rebounding himself but I think you've got to excuse Mark on that occasion he was open shots any open shot is a bonus for australia at this stage and uh there really wasn't too much to lose with 12 points down four minutes to play uh, they, they they will have to gamble but i don't think they can stay in the zone any longer because croatia will be quite content to spread the floor use the ball each time down the floor isolate the man they've got two or three play they got at least three players that are capable of making the three-pointer so that there's two choices one is to keep battling away to keep the scores respectable or to go for broke put some pressure there try to force a mistake see if they can narrow it and save it 
Interesting on the Croatian bench, Lindsay. Uh, someone we've uh, been watching for a few years, Mirko Novosel down there on the bench, and he's having as much to say in the timeouts as any of the coaching staff. Of course, Mirko coached the Yugoslavian team for many, many years. Yes, well, I know him very well. We're good friends, and uh, there he is in the background there, the man he's with the balding now head. The uh, virtue the bit of the sport in uh, Croatia. Every, although he stepped aside from coaching on a permanent basis, he just still can't get too far away from it. So he's uh, he's giving a fair amount of instructions here. The players, of course, respect him. He's a, a very knowledgeable man in world basketball. And I think much of the credit for the advancement of the old Yugoslavian basketball and now Croatia goes to Mirka Novosel. Well, the players are back on the court now. 12-point break. See, uh, Andrew Gaze has been given a rest. And Damian Keogh has come in. Tony Ronaldson back in there playing with four fouls. So there's Andrew Gaze. He's sitting at the moment. Sitting with... Uh, well, they've taken his point count down, but uh, it's, it's certainly over the 20-point area. And... Uh, the lineup Australia's got out there now is Vlahov, Ronaldson, Keo, Bradkey, and Smythe. So Shane Heal on the bench as well. Vlahov renews his battle out there with Tony Kukots. Well, Kukots loves this. He can play one-on-one -on -one out there at the centre line with anyone. They'll just use the clock. Underneath. Power it. They go and find the hands of Sveti Chanan that time. Well, that's a worry. That uh, That's a mismatch with... Uh, Phil Smyth trying to guard Svetachan and close to the basket like that. 14 point break is the biggest of the ball game. 79 plays 65 and with 3 minutes 20 out from the end. Vlahov tries his hand with a 3. Run down by Dino Raja and they're in no hurry at all now Croatia. They know they can use up uh, 30 seconds on every play and uh, reduce this game to about 10 more possessions. And ten more possessions will make it very, very difficult for Australia to get back in. That's five apiece. And Australia trail by 14. Smythe got a hand on that, trying to run it down. And, oh, lucky not to get that ball back. But there's only one second left on the shot clock. Damien Keogh pointing it out to Smythe. And... Timeout has been called. This is an interesting situation. Uh, Lindsay, when you bring the ball in, they're going to have to hurl the ball down to someone to shoot it straight it's away it. as soon as they touch it. It's interesting, but no problem to see. Uh, Croatia would be quite content to use 30 seconds every time down the floor. Uh, the, the, the game is safe for them now. It's just a matter by how much Australia can make a couple of plays to reduce the margin. Croatia will be, uh, will be at ease uh, right now with uh, Kukoc capable of playing one-on-one -on -one out the centre you really have to gamble you can't afford to leave him out if you're serious about trying to uh, reverse the scores you've got to get out there on Kukoc and get the ball out of his hands somehow but what happens after that is really not much of a bonus either because it'll open up someone else and with the depth of talent that uh, Croatia's got there Svetakarnin, uh, Frankovic, Raja can all take it to the basket one at a time this margin has been created in just two or three minutes of errors. Without that two or three minutes, it goes to the wire. It just shows you the quality of the competition here that this team is capable of providing you with that sort of a punishment with just a couple of errors. But it's been a very good game for Australia. They'll finish the game with uh, some flair and fire here the last couple of minutes. And uh, they, they won't lose anything from morale out of this match. I only hope they can uh, keep it around this margin if, uh, if they are to lose the game, that they can keep it around the 14 points because they deserve to. They've worked hard enough to get it to this area. And we've talked before about the game in Barcelona two years ago where they lost to this team by 40 points. They can take a great deal of heart out of this effort. There's that long pass down. <laughs> Didn't find anybody. So uh, they just uh, wasted the one second on the clock and they won't be too concerned about that, I wouldn't think. But it does mean Australia get the ball back in the front court because nobody touched it on the way through. Smythe out there. Oh. Blahoff working for the ball down low to try and uh, take advantage of Comersets, but down the middle for Mark Bradkey and rolls it in for two. Nice move from the big man. And we got it back to a 12-point game. 
Now it's out of Kukoc's hand. You want to make sure he doesn't get it back again. Commerce oh, he late. does. <laughs> well, they can uh, only double team so many. As you mentioned before, someone's got to be open every time you do it. Vlahov trying to foul uh, Kukoc. Raja. What this is, it's showing a great deal of respect for Australian basketball for Croatia. Basically to freeze the ball in the last couple of seconds. It's a very fine credit to Australian basketball that it forces Croatia to do that. Lindsay uh, Komasets, who uh, just scored his 25th point, he's really been the wild card in this game. Well, I don't know about wild card. That suggests that uh, it would be a surprise that he does that. He's uh, a very, very talented player, very efficient. This is one of those games that brings out the best in the best. Three-point shot from Smythe. What I meant by the wild card is they were expecting big things from uh, Kukots and Raja and Brankovic, perhaps, but uh, Komasets is just one of those many Croatian players that can come out and hurt you. Yes, well, I think the other thing that's uh, a tribute to Australian basketball as well is that uh, Croatia has not gone deep to the bench. That they've just gone with their six or seven players. They've all been very, very fine talent. They play so well together, they're so experienced, and every player is capable of, of uh, completing all aspects of the game. Passing, rebound, very efficient shooting. They know the game so well. Alanovic gets it into the hand of Kukots, and they foul again, as Australia trying to foul and put uh, Croatia at the free throw line uh, to get the one-on-one -on -one situation. In fact, Interesting uh, right here, Australia meaning to do that, but the uh, Croatian coach up off the bench saying, hey, that's got to be one and one. Chance to give the ball up but to Andrew Vlahos, fourth foul. He's played with three fouls for a long, long time and puts Kukots at the stripe. And just because Kukots is there, the crowd starts to scream, but he lets them down by missing off the free throw line. 14-point game, Ronaldson looking for a quick three. Can't get it. And it falls in the hands of Vlahov. Backing it back, he, uh, Damien Keogh, that was a nervous shot. Yeah. I mean, he's just been sitting... He didn't sitting really want to take it, he wanted to give it back to Andrew Vlahov if he could. Sitting on the bench for about uh, 35 minutes in this game and then coming out to take a shot like that in a game of this magnitude, it's a tough one to try and make. And even the experience of Damien Keogh, the Sydney Kings guard, put up one of his worst shots. 65 seconds to go. Smythe, look at the size against... Uh, Tony Kukots and the ball handling ability of the big man too. Six foot nine and handles the ball like a, a little kid. Smythe runs this down. They've got numbers down the floor this time. Five on three if they can use it. Inside they go to Vlahov. Gets rid of his defensive man and no basket. Oh. Travel's called. Travel called by the uh, referee from the USA. And Andrew Vlahov couldn't believe it. David Claxton, the assistant coach up there with Barry Barnes to try and restrict... Croatia here, down the middle they go. 39 seconds left. All the way to the hoop for two, we've got a 16 point game. The flags all over the place here. And uh, try and keep track of this game on the monitor because there's absolutely no way you can see it from our commentary position. Stuck in a sea of flags. And uh, in fact the cameras can't see it. We have to go to this shot for you. That will obviously be a, an offensive foul on Phil Smythe who gives it up. Trouble for television this game and, well, Barry Barnes can be well satisfied. You can see the look on David Claxton's face, even though they're 16 points down with one play to go. He knows that uh, this is one of Australian basketball's finer moments. Reverse the 40-point uh, thrashing in Barcelona to show that they can play with a team like Croatia. Down the middle again, Dino Raja into the hands of Bradke. A chance for Australia to score before it finishes. Seven seconds to go. Oh, Mark. Mark Bradke for three. <laughs> he thought he'd dribbled it that far. Yes. Might as well. Two points go to Damien Keogh to finish it off. And what a great way to finish. A 14-point victory for Croatia. But it can be a game where for virtually everybody can be happy. Well, I think Australia can take a lot of credit for that game. They forced Croatia to play to their best. And uh, I think out of this game, there will be a lot of confidence for the games that are coming up in the, uh, in the qualifying round. This means that Australia will meet the United States in the next game. They must win two of the other games in order to get to the, to, to the medal round. Those other games 
will be a challenge for Australia, but after this one, they can do that with confidence. Many good players in the game for Australia. Mark Brett, he started the game so well, did a lot of work, found it tough to keep it going in the second half. Andrew Gaze was a consistent threat throughout. Shane Hill made his uh, moments from time to time, but a lot of the credit, of course, goes to Croatia with uh, Komacic, Kukoc, Brankovic, Four. and Roger was the man Four. that uh, really gave the, the uh, Croatians the break in the first half. His power and strength and efficiency was too much to handle. Uh, tomorrow, a day off for Australia, then the United States. We can look forward to that with confidence. Well, we trust everybody in Australia, Croatian fans, Australian fans alike, have enjoyed that one. An entertainer here from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. This is Phil Lynch and Lindsay Gaze.